Hey everyone, I'm Tim with SparkFun Electronics and I'm here today to talk to you about RFID. We had a video in the past that has recently hit 100,000 views, so thanks for checking that out. And we wanted to redo it and show you what we have in the catalog now. So we've had some changes and I want to take you through what's available here at SparkFun. So for the SM130, we have a number of options for tags. Now be aware these are 13.56 megahertz tags. So they won't work with your other tags that, that are generally like a 125 kilohertz. But for the 13.56, we carry the token tag. We have a waterproof laundry tag. This can be sewn into a uh, garment or used in any other kind of use, but uh, it is waterproof. We have a transparent tag and we have an adhesive tag so you can stick this to something. So I did want to bring out a couple points of our SM130 shield. This is a cool device and it has a couple features that are really exciting here. We have the built-in antenna that we had already mentioned, but we also have XB uh, headers here that are meant to mate up with the XB Explorer regulated. So you can easily add a XB functionality and have wireless connectivity to your RFID solution so that you can send your information wherever you need it to go. Um, this also is a great shield because it works with the Arduino, obviously, and so that leaves a lot of, of ability for you to, to use it in a widespread of projects um, and easily adapt into it and be able to control it and work with it. So the, SM, the SM130 is a really great product and um, well worth checking out if you were interested in RFID. Uh, especially if you need a programmable option for your tags. So after our SM130, that leaves us with the ID series of RFID modules. Now these series are, are actually brought to us by ID Innovations. They're a great company that works with RFID solutions. And uh, they have a three series set here that we offer in our catalog. We have the ID3, the ID12, and the ID20, and these are all LA series. And so what that is, you may be familiar with these from our previous catalog, um, but the LA is actually low voltage. And so this is going to be able to work at 2.8 volts to 5 volts. It gives you a nice range to work with, and it's, it's more flexible for your situation. Um, the specs are very similar. So if you've watched my previous video about RFID, a lot of that stands true other than the low voltage. The ID3 still requires an external antenna that you build and you need to set up for your specific situation. Now the ID12 and the ID20 LA, they both have the built-in antenna and they will continue to be kind of a one module solution for your RFID. We still carry the RFID USB board and this is great, it plugs right into a mini B cable and you're ready to go. You can take your ID modules and just mount them right up and plug it into a USB and you're ready to go. So it's a great package and it's a nice low cost option to get RFID going. Additionally, I wanted to point out that we do sell a basic breakout for the ID series of readers. This is great if you really want to have hands-on on all of the situations that you plug this into. So this breaks out all of the pins that the ID reader has and gives you access in a standard 0.1 inch breadboardable spacing. So this is a great little breakout board for those of you who really want to have hands-on control of all of the features of your setup. One tip that I want to make for you on this though is that instead of soldering directly to the board and forcing your module to be permanently mounted, you should take what we sell is actually XB um, two millimeter headers and you can cut those down to size and solder them to this board and then you have a temporary mount so that you can remove your module in case you need to repair or replace it. So this is a really good option and a, a good tip to keep in mind. First up we're going to take a look at the SM130 and uh, we're going to range test the four options for tags that we currently carry here at SparkFun. We'll start with our adhesive tag and for the SM130 on this breakout we have an LED that's going to light up when there is a reed actually present. So um, let's see how far of a range we get. So we're getting a good solid reed at about one inch, one and a quarter inches out of the adhesive tag. 
Next up is our transparent tag. We're getting a little more range, but very comparable to the adhesive tag out of that. Now for the laundry tag. Quite a bit less range. We're, we're between three quarters to um, somewhere between a half an inch and three quarters of an inch for the laundry tag. And finally, our token. We're getting a reed right at about an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters. So very comparable with the larger tags. Uh, that laundry tag does have a shorter range though. So, um, so that's it for the SM130. Uh, do keep in mind that the SM130 does need an external antenna. And so um, a good option for that is our, our RFID shield because that includes a built-in trace antenna. We're gonna wrap this up here and set up for the um, ID series of RFID tag readers next. All right, let's do some range testing. We're now set up here with the ID series of RFID readers. We're gonna go through the 3, 12, and 20 LA and range test them. Um, remember that the ID3 series um, does need that external antenna and that is mandatory. So we're gonna range test it even though, uh, especially from our last findings, this is likely not going to work. All right, so we're gonna test the ID3. Here's our card. Our button and our glass capsule. No read out of that. All of our boards do include an antenna mount point so that you can actually plug in an antenna and access that functionality. So it's easy to, to add that in later if you do need an ID3. Next up, we're going to do the ID12 LA. Starting with our card. So just over two inches, maybe two and a quarter inch. So that's a nice range out of the card. Here's our glass capsule. Now we're within a one inch range. So um, just on the inside, maybe three quarters of an inch. And finally our button. Just over an inch, maybe an inch and a half. Somewhere between an inch and a quarter and an inch and a half, so pretty good. So on the ID12, we get the card, then the button, then finally the glass capsule as far as range goes. So we'll switch out for the ID20 now. And we're gonna test it. Two and three quarters of an inch out of the card on the ID20. So we see a nice uh, slight increase. It's nothing hugely substantial, but it does actually add range. Now the button, we're at two inches. So again, we're getting growth out of that. And finally, the glass capsule. And again, the glass capsule comes in about three quarters of an inch. So not much of a change on that end, but we did see some gain out of our card and out of our button. So um, these are great little modules, uh, easy to use, and we do sell the ID12 in a kit. It includes our USB RFID card that we're using now, as well as an ID12 LA and two RFID cards. So it's a great little kit and it's uh, $49.95 so um, you can start experimenting for 50 bucks. Now uh, one last RFID option that we have is very nice. Uh, we had just spoke about maybe using um, our credit card style tags as an employee punch tag. Well we have this option from Olamex. This is called the Olamex Mod and this is a 125 kilohertz RFID reader that is actually meant to go directly into your USB and be an all-in-one solution. Now, the other cool thing about this is it's under 50 bucks. 
So if you just wanted to plug straight into your computer and write a program that's going to operate on the PC or on a Mac, then you can use this and it's a great option with no cables and no extra peripherals. So out of the card, we get about an inch range. Out of our button, we have to have almost direct contact with the module. As for the glass capsule, we do get a read, but again, it needs contact with the module's antenna. So um, the range is a little bit shorter. Uh, however, because this is a direct USB solution for RFID, you may have that more direct contact that, that may not be a problem for your application. So keep that in mind going forward, but this is still a great option if you want to go straight into USB and not futz around with any extra peripherals. All right, so in conclusion, we've taken a look at all of the RFID modules that SparkFun has to offer, and uh, we've range tested them so you have a better idea of what you're actually looking at when you're shopping for one of these modules. Just to go over a couple quick specs with you to, to cover the differences between the, the modules, the ID series is a 125 kilohertz module, where the SM130 is actually a 13.5 megahertz. The ID series communicates at 9600 baud uh, via TTL, or it also works on an RS-232 connection. The SM130 uh, communicates at an 115200 baud, uh, as well as it works on I2C at 400 kilohertz. So the um, Next major factor is power, and the IDLA is uh, a 2.8 to 5 volt device, where the SM130 is 5 volts only. Um, one thing with antennas to keep in mind, the ID12 and the ID20 have a built-in antenna, as well as the Olamex mod, where the ID3LA and the SM130 both need an external antenna in order to work. The cards in their respective classes have some variances as well. The um, 125 kilohertz cards are a 32-bit, 12-digit, non-programmable card. On the 13.56 um, the megahertz cards, those are MyFair cards, and they are 1 1K of programmable space with an eight-digit factory identification number for you to use straight out of the, the box. And so uh, they each have their own pluses and minuses as far as what you may want to use in your application, and hopefully you can find one here that works for you.